And hi, hello. Um, I'd like to thank Inti and Cosmin <laughs> and Parasite. Okay, um, the Museo del Barro, I never translated because barro is mud. So it's the mud museum, <laughs> it's mud, okay? And why is mud? <laughs> why we call Museo del Barro? Um, because um, somehow it, it starts to collect um, artifacts made with mud. <laughs> but uh, um, one of the, the thinkers, the main thinkers in Paraguay, she was Josefina Pla, she was a Canarian uh, woman. Uh, she thought this beautiful thing that uh, she, she used to say that uh, mud is the material uh, in which dreams uh, made from. It's okay to say that? Okay. So um, the Museo del Barro is a great dream. So it would be nice, uh, was nice to, to, to take that name. It's already, yeah? I'm sorry if, if the photos are not, but it looks okay? Yeah? Okay. Uh, the Museo del Barro, as the center for visual art is commonly known, houses collection of popular art. I will speak about what uh, we call popular. Ethnic art, indigenous art, as well as several expressions of what we call urban art. Uh, it's more like uh, uh, erudite, Western uh, category of art. The visitor may encounter a collection of popular masks, uh, an uh, ample assortment of Franciscan and Jesuit images, uh, the crucifixion <laughs> are all over, <laughs> <laughs> streaking uh, ceremonial costumes uh, or some uh, selection of Paraguayan art, in our uh, rooms. Uh, the temporary exhibits are widely varied from a showing of some emerging artists to large overview exhibit that bring together different works on document on, for example, uh, 19th century portraiture in Paraguay to a collection of uh, recent production of the weavers of Aopoi that is an indigenous cloth that takes its embroidery from the type used in colonial shirts. I have to use this, perhaps. <laughs> um, the museum, uh, this is uh, from, for example, uh, we managed to do some exhibitions outside. This is in Trienal de Chile, in Chile. Uh, that's other. And this is in Bellas Artes, Buenos Aires, is the Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, and we, that wa was one of the, for me, uh, was one of the things that I liked uh, in the paper, in the cultural, I don't know how to say, newspaper, but supplemento, like, um, they put in the, one of the main uh, newspapers, they put like in capital letters, uh, Museo del Barro comes to discuss canon. So it was very nice. <laughs> uh, the museum seeks to erase the distinct ways of classifying art, doing away with boundaries between popular, indigenous, and urban in Paraguay. Thus the Museo del Barro preserves the ambiguity of being a muse museum without totally being a museum. It attempts to skirt the boundaries of the concept of the, of the concept of a museum, while at, at the same time, re renders this concept ill-fitting and permeable. It is an art museum as fluid as the definition of art itself, 
which here has tried to include, in the words of Paraguayan art scholar Tizio Escobar, the beauty of the other, not the otherness, the other. Um, I have to, to bring some history here. The Center for Visual Arts, Museo del Barro, came into uh, thought several initiatives over the course of 40 years. What makes it unusual is that it has been created by artists, anthropologists that never studied anthropology because we don't have it, and art critics. Originally, it emerged as a project that would function on the margins of the state and in opposition to its politics. We have to uh, remember that we had a long di dictatorship. Alfredo Stroessner was in the power for 35 years till 1989. Uh, the center's three museums sprang into life independently. However, they eventually came together under one roof as one project, like this is the construction. The center's roots to back to 1972 with a circulating collection. We, don't, we didn't have a place. Started by Paraguayan artists Olga Blinder and Carlos Colombino. Uh, they are the dream team there. <laughs> uh, as its name implies, the collection did not have it on, it, its own space and moved to one place or another. In, a, in the 80s, a permanent space for the collection was sought with the Museo del Barrio inaugurated in a small house. That was the small house. Artists Osvaldo Salerno and Isan Gaye, along with Carlos Colombino, spearhead the effort. Our historian Tizio Escobar la later joined the group. And they move, and they move, till they, uh, four, four years construction, they uh, made it. <laughs> this very tiny uh, space that grow later. Um, in 1984, the first exhibition space was opened and later developed into the three collection integrating the Center for Visual Arts. The group had long been interested in popular and indigenous art. I must say that when I, I am talking here about popular and indigenous, uh, we are talking about um, subaltern, subaltern, subaltern communities that don't have uh, a specific place in the decisions. Um, and of course, we are, we are talking about community, communitarian uh, practices, not uh, individual. They are a lot of individuals that works, but the practices are communitarian. So the group had, had long been interested in this, inspired, inspired by poet and art critic Josefina Pla, a native of the Canary Island, who settled in Paraguay, as well as uh, important personalities like Livia Abramo, for us they are important, uh, he was Brazilian, and uh, uh, Bartomeu Melia and Olga Blinder herself. The treatment of the works in this museum makes it, makes it possible for popular and indigenous art to be seen as equal to urban or erudite art. The museum seeks to provide a dialogue between these types of art and in spite of their differences, striving to undermine the official myth that popular and indigenous art can be reduced to folkloric, authentic, vernacular, our very own. That is, popular art can often be trivialized, stripped of, of its subtleties and differences. <laughs> when Tizio Escobar, who has given deep thought to Paraguayan art, art from this tribal perspective, popular indigenous urban, in a systematic uh, way wrote uh, La Belleza de los Otros, The Beauty of the Other, that is a book published in 94, he recounts there the foundational story set out in uh, Tukule, that is a shaman, Tukule, bracelet, Tukule's bracelet. Tukule, a power Ishir shaman, is delicately making a bracelet called Oikakar. Escobar questions why 
it is necessary to add a line of multicolor feathers to something which appears to have already been finished and receive this answer so that it looks more beautiful. This bracelet is functional, ceremonial, shamanic, and ritual. But at the same time, to have these functions, uh, the bracelet has to shine. So it is also uh, a, a aesthetic function. It should attract our attention through, through its shining beauty. <clears throat> the language of difference emerged intuitively at the beginning. First came the practice and then the theory. The Museo del Barro followed with path, a path that revealed itself in the middle of the journey. Uh, it went about constructing uh, itself in fragments from total chance until it yielded, although it never completely yielded, in one place, actually in two, that of the physical place and its conceptual place too. Paraguayan art finds in the Museo del Barro a space in which we can see ourselves from multiple perspectives, talking to the we, that in Paraguayan means uh, we, we are two, uh, at least two, since language always puts that, that duality in evidence. In Guarani, the language of the majority of the Paraguayan population, there are two words for we. One, which is inclusive, and the other, which is exclusive. Let me put in these terms. Uh, the, 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 the word, uh, the we that is inclusive is ñande. If I use ñande, like we ate a cake, and I talk to you, we eat, eat a cake, you ate a cake too. <laughs> <laughs> but if, you, if I say ore, that is another word that's exclusive, uh, ore ate a cake, you didn't. Okay, so uh, it's interesting to think identity. Um, these two ways of saying we make up a specific way of understanding identity. If the official culture tries to propagate a unified national being through diverse means, the language itself gives the light to this concept. And uh, uh, talking about heritage, um, one uh, thing perhaps is talk about inheritance, and another about heritage, patrimonial, and patrimonialization. Here I would talk about the procedures of patrimonialization, about inheritance, about what is left for us from earlier times, but what is considered heritage or not. It is about an operation, most of the time political, that is over, at least in Paraguay, that serves to the nationalistic programs and related to the identities issue, uh, this last understood as monolithic. The Museo del Barro harbors another way of understanding heritage from the construction of another repertoire, uh, one that in its moment could find, couldn't find countenance in which to recognize itself. <laughs> One of the founders of the museum, Carlos Colomino, comments, and I quote, to think of a space that not only conglomerates work, but also people, was one of many possible strategies. I have to remind you that in the in dictator time, in dictatorship times, they didn't have a place, so this place was like some uh, uh, place to, to reunion and to talk. This favored a certain resistance spirit to feel that the community was conformed in, in, in the first instance by ourselves and that we needed to give another image to Paraguay, one that we wanted to, in to invent from our desire. This is very important in this museum, the desire and the affection. Later, that instance of community has expanded. The circle grew larger. 
The idea of setting up a dialogue uh, and bringing together the artistic productions of Paraguay's different people came about through an unplanned action. While Tizio Escobar was writing uh, one book that is capital for us, is an interpretation of Paraguay visual arts, was published in two volumes in 82 and 84, he was faced with the dilemma of how to verbalize these differences and, and to find a place within an official history that denied these differences. With his book, The Myth of Art and the Myth of People, Escobar consolidated his thinking, it was published in 86, 87, uh, about the equivalence of popular and indigenous art alongside so-called erudite art. This, this analysis laid the foundation for a more conclusive discussion about modernity and also about the nature of the erudite and the popular no longer face it, facing them of as binary contradictions, but in terms of, of exploring them and defining Define, define, uh, defining uh, relationships. Escobar texts sum up the vocation of the Center of Visual Arts, uh, Museo del Barro. Uh, it departs, departs from art theory to enter into cultural theory with all its political implication. The disputes for the hegemonic control of the symbolic capital of a territory involved into a nation. The Museo del Barro significantly adopts the praxis of this text, the theoretical basis that, that, that ties together questions that have arisen through doing. This concept of art set forth by Escobar and by extension at the museum um, permits the, insert the insertion of the concept of popular art into the writing of another history of art and the and, and to begin to dislocate Eurocentric concepts. These new ideas concern the autonomy of art, the concept of contemporaneity, and the uniqueness. Uh, this is not a This is not a crucifixion. Huh? <laughs> this is San Andreas. <laughs> it's another way to uh, uh, adorar. How do you say adorar? Huh? to worship a um, uh, system of tortures. <laughs> um, one of the major discussions regarding the use of the word art to talk about the aesthetic poetic productions of non-Western cultures has to do with a concrete fact. These cultures do not use the word art to describe the production of material objects nor for the, mo for the most part do they consider their productions to be art. The art is not in their in, the, in their language. Here are the classifications. <laughs> <clears throat> However, art history, Western art, art history, has no comes in using this category when it considers that one production or another corresponds to its own past. So, for example, in e Egyptian art, cave paintings are categorized as art, etc. Likewise, both indigenous and peasant art appeal to the senses when they seek to represent, present, imagine, confront the world in which they live. According to Escobar, certain cultural moments are thus stressed and safeguarded, resulting in tense configuration equivalent, equivalent to that the Western understands as art. Uh, both indigenous and popular art have particular characteristics that differentiate, differentiate them from modern or so-called uh, contemporary art. These forms of art, unlike modern artworks, have no need to appeal to autonomy to separate themselves from a belief system. They have guarded a narrow relationship with it, and at times the forms are intimately connected to a ritual. The poetry that surrounds an object is mixed up with both beliefs and everyday life in, uh, in such a way that they cannot be separated out. In this sense, the postulation of an, of an indigenous or popular art form questions the notion that for art to be art, it must be devoid of function. The notion of or originality is also called into question since uh, these cultures work 
for the most part along the, the lines of tradition from the past and their ways of, of re-signifying and re-elaborating these forms propose other paths that, uh, than those taken by erudit art. But I always say that art is very traditional. For example, to be, uh, you have to break things, for example, and that's a tradition. And if you, uh, if you, Always, always have to break some things uh, to make some type of, of, of career in art. That's a tradition of Western art. Um, the question of who authored a work is not a primary uh, one. Also, with the passage of time, uh, the, this is, I don't know how to, yes. Uh, this is changing and many ceramic makers or wood carvers are signing their works. Popular or indigenous art consolidates its forms and creates dense meanings that correspond to the conditions of existence and production of the community in which they are created. Indeed, this pers perspective of thinking about art shakes up the established conventions of what centers uh, of learning have defined as contemporary art. And I always, uh, I always uh, have this question, which contemporary art? <clears throat> and and I, like, uh, I, I always like to discuss that uh, the notion of contemporar contemporary art identifies with the current artistic, artistic pra practice, urban and erudite most of the time, uh, a Western or Westernized uh, practice, if you may, say so, to uh, further problematize things. At this moment in which we have already disbelieved a totalizer and totalizing narrative, a closing one, I think we can no longer continue to identify uh, contemporary art with this category of uh, urban or erudite art. Uh, to problematize this notion uh, implies to accept, furthermore, that other presents exist that do not coincide, coincide with each other, that uh, they experience other ways of naming themselves and contour definitions that allow entrance that yield to the uh, interesting contamination part. Uh, for that reason, I would like to say that popular art can be contemporary as long as the word contemporary is defining de a moment in which there could be differences, different ways of bringing near the work of giving sense or imagine, imagining other moments, perhaps disturbing them. Um, the, 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 El Museo del Barro, with every action it has under, undertaken, uh, often outside the scope of what is considered uh, usual for a museum, has tried to make more malleable the borders of certain academic categories. Following this model, uh, it finds other ways of in involving itself in the world. The postulation of indigenous and popular art comes from this ability to make the borders between different types uh, of art more flexible. It looks to shake up the certainty of fields of knowledge, to move apparently fixed concepts so uh, we can observe that reality moves, letting one see uh, what is out of sight and it appears. Indigenous and popular artists from their way, their ways of responding to their reality, attack the gap in wood uh, that the Western conception of the history of art has le left open. The work of Escobar and the effort that the Museo del Barro has demonstrated from the beginning bear witness to these processes and contribute to the continual shaking up of the borders that have been perhaps for way too long unmovable. Uh, for example, uh, this is uh, a very young uh, Ache uh, man. Uh, he is not in, in, in her town. Uh, he is in Asuncion, the capital. Um, the, um, 
the painting in his face is uh, a war painting, war to, to go to war. They don't go into war anymore. <laughs> but uh, he is in a demonstration in Asuncion to um, recuperate their lands. So that's, that is a very interesting uh, uh, resignification of their own, uh, of their own uh, uh, poetic and, and, and their own practices. And he is, uh, of course, with a suit, yeah? Because you have to be serious. <laughs> but he has the, uh, the arrow, yeah? The arrow, like a menace for political, <laughs> for political, uh, for politicians. <laughs> um, well, so I have some more images. Um, I like to talk now. I, I have a few minutes. Yeah, um, I like to talk now about three uh, three things. The thing that in, in Paraguay, I think Museo del Barro also influenced, inf had an influence of, uh, in the, in the um, production of urban artists as well. Not only, uh, so it, it's interesting to, to, to look. That is um, a ritual, an indigenous ritual in the Chaco area. Chaco, the Chaco area is, uh, is not only in Paraguay, it's in uh, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, and 5% of the Chaco in Brazil. Uh, is the second um, environment, uh, the most important environment in, in South America uh, after Amazonas. And, and, and they are Guarani people uh, that in, that me have a real huge migration in uh, in eighteenth century, and they have this ritual that uh, have three days dancing, dancing, and drinking, and have a good time, and they encounters the dead, their dead. Uh, of course, everything is mixed up. This is this is this was very important to Tizio Escobar because he saw here like an, a contamination scene that they started to uh, embrace all of whatever <laughs> they uh, wanted, uh, and that's why this uh, ritual is very very alive. You know? <laughs> this is, there are photographs for the 90s, and these are photographs of, I don't know, maybe five years ago. Yeah, they are changing a lot, but they, uh, they still uh, have a really interesting relationship with this ritual. So Freddy Casco, that uh, is a, um, Freddy Casco is, a, is an artist that, um, his approach, you know, uh, he's interested in the borders between what could be called high culture and popular culture, as well as culture of the masses. He presents a stand almost revisionist about tradition and also about the power that can be associated to certain narratives. Freddy uh, works, works from uh, transgressions, most of the time sat subtle and sees certain irony, always. Uh, he works with this community and he made uh, a, a series of uh, photographs and a four channel uh, install a video installation. Uh, and he uh, named this work Phantom Chaco. Phantom Chaco, yes, Chaco Fantasma ponders from certain no notions of otherness and resistance to cultural practices uh, as the one he took to work, this, the arete wasu, in this called the, the ritual. 
the Chaco, its landscape, and uh, this ritual that um, unveils uh, that, that plain and wild territory, and unknown perhaps, uh, become a sort of other world, parallel, phantom, that which only exists in the world's threshold, something that does not finish to happen or does not finish not to happen. So the photographs are like this. It's not uh, it's the, the way that, uh, no, it's not, uh, okay. The other, the other one, the, the other artist is Marcos Benitez. Um, he, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, the work of Marcos Benitez pushed, pushed out into other territories since his participation in a group uh, which research issues related to identity. He approach, uh, approaches various concer concerns about the popular from the particular glands that, that sustained his work. Uh, some years ago, his work becomes interested in a ceramic that has been many times neglected, uh, a serial ceramic uh, made in Arewa, that is a city, a ceramic that takes mediatic images and reproduces, reproduces them ad infinitum, with no apology. In a gesture, uh, Marcos takes the matrix out of his own head and delivers it to a family, uh, the, the, the Roman family, um, the, a family of ceramists, from them to make a cast. His head turns into a money box, then into a lamp, and then into a chandelier. Uh, some of them remains as mortuary masks, like this, with his eyes closed, um, and, the, and the color of clay and his parts blacker as a result of the heat of the ovens. The other series uh, is taken from the woman who painted, Mrs. Roman, who painted in his face all those characters that they usually reproduce without paying any royalty, of course. Spider-Man, SpongeBob, the Dalmatians, Pokemon. Uh, in these versions, the woman, Mrs. Roman, with their colors, give back to Marcos his eyes. You know, there's no eyes, and there is eyes. <laughs> his own glance. So, uh, to, for, fin for my, just to finish, this is Julia Isidres. <clears throat> um, she's from Ita, a, a little, little, little town in Paraguay. Uh, he, is, uh, he is a popular artist. From her other contemporary being, Julia, along with her mother, she's already dead now, Juana, installs her fierce gesture into the world. That gesture uh, that has been repeated by all the women from which she descends. A gesture of the hands that surrounds the void and at the same time shelters it by the form chosen by her hands. This woman has known how to reform reformulate her own ways from, from the depths of her history. In the powerful gesture of her hand, Julia sets aside the folklorist and romantic view that falls history and rises by the side of the beings she has created. Um, I, have, I, I have a quote from Escobar here, and I quote, these disturbing sculptures show that considered in the, themselves nor tradition nor modernity offer warranties nor constitute threats. The, the truth that fits both of them is what legitimizes the symbols produced by them. The truth of Julia is from an ambiguous time and an unattached present to fully and clearly express it implies an intense effort effort and require secure and solid forms, figures which are behind the origin and above the fence of the, th of the threshold of modernity. Um, they are Juana Marta and Julia. And this is the, the place that we show their work with other women's work. 
Uh, and I ha and, and to, just to finish, Juan and Julia, they, uh, they are the only two Paraguayan artists that went, uh, that were in the documenta uh, in 2012. It is very, it's the envy of everyone in Paraguay. <laughs> they are like. <laughs> Um, the fact that Chus Martinez, one of the curators there, had some clue, clue, <laughs> <laughs> about Paraguayan popular ceramic is the result from more than 40 years of work to break somehow these margins I was talking about. Thank you. <laughs>